What's up, lovers of whiskey and watchers of YouTube? I'm the Malta Activist, and today we have with us a much sought after expression from Campbelltown, all the way from the Glengyle Distillery. I'm, of course, talking about this Kilcarran, 16 years old. Let's go. Before we begin, thank you to our first time viewers. Thank you for uh, clicking in. And hey man, if you like whiskey related stuff, then this channel is the one for you. Please, if you like what you see, then don't forget to uh, like and subscribe and share and all the good stuff and click on that bell icon. I mean, you know what to do. You're, you're an expert on how YouTube subscriptions work. Uh, to my uh, returning viewers, thank you for uh, staying along for the ride. And finally, a big thank you to our YouTube members and our Patreon members. Without you, this channel would not be happening. So, let's go. Like most of my Kill Karen videos, I will most probably go into a... <laughs> into a nostalgic retelling of how I discovered Kilcarran. So if you've already heard that or you simply find it too boring, then please use the timestamps that I take the pain to put in the videos and it'll take you straight to the tasting. For those of you who don't mind a little rambling, uh, then uh, do stick around as I tell you how I came to discover Kilcarran in the first place. So the year is 2010 or 11, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, I go to my uh, whiskey society's tasting where you're all supposed to bring in a new whiskey that no one's ever heard of. And uh, yes, I know, a tall order, but you know, back in the day, we didn't know anything. So I remember getting to the party, uh, Kilcarran work in progress number four. And when everyone had it, they said, holy mother of God, what the hell is this good stuff? Right? And as it turned out, it was the WIP4, uh, which blew my socks off, put me on this path of uh, finding out everything I could about uh, Glengyle Distillery and Kilcarran. And here we are, uh, you know, 12, 12 years later, 12, 13 years later, we're sitting here with what is the culmination of uh, almost a decade worth, well, no, I wouldn't say a decade, 16 years. Well, a decade now, almost maybe. Uh, almost, uh, no, why am I saying a decade? Two decades, almost two decades worth of blood, sweat, and tears that Glen Gyle have put into their uh, into their whiskeys and uh, so that we can drink some uh, age statements. So, so thank you for that. And there's a few things I just want to say about uh, about uh, the Glengal Distillery. Uh, first of all, uh, I don't know if you know, uh, they're owned by the same family that owns uh, Springbank. That's right. So I think it's called. They're called the JNA Mitchell and Company. That's the company that owns Springbank. They also uh, own Glengal Distillery. Uh, I'm sure if you didn't know that, I'm sure you were pretty suspicious because this looks like a bottle of Springbank, doesn't it? Yeah. I think, yeah, I think that's what they're doing. So, so a smart decision, I think, because, you know, volumes. Uh, so uh, the Kilcarran now comes in this uh, Springbank type looking bottle. And uh, I believe it was in 2004, I'm not 100% sure, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. In 2004, uh, the, the JNA company uh, went and bought out the Glen Guile distillery. And so they said, hey, this is cool. Let's buy this uh, washed up distillery and uh, we are all going to uh, distill new spirit in here. Now, <laughs> here's the fun, funny bit, right? They couldn't call it Glen Guile. They couldn't call the whiskey Glen Guile because for some reason, the Loch Lomond group has a blended whiskey called Glen Gyle. So they said, well, what do we do now? And they said, well, let's call it Kilcarran because that's the river that flows very close to where the distillery is. And I believe that's where they get the water from. Hence the name Kilcarran. Um, so my love affair with Kilcarran goes back 12 plus years when they came out with the WIPs, which is the work in progress. I don't know if you can see it in the back. Oh, it's up there. Don't worry about it. Um, but, uh, you know, some of their best whiskeys were the WIP4. That was amazing. I think it was the WIP5 where they came up with the, with the bourbon and the different cherry mature. That was amazing. Uh, and finally, I think the WIP7, which was the cost strength matured in bourbon, was just absolutely stunning and I believe that was uh, that was a, uh, I think an 11 year old whiskey at that time and after that of course they came out with a kill Karen 12 which we've done a review of on this channel as well so which brings us to this 16 year old 
Normally, I would have thought the distillery would have been like, hey man, we have a good 12 year old, let's continue uh, you know, producing that and then we'll figure out uh, different age statements later. Uh, let's perfect this 12 year old, but you know, uh, they said, screw that, uh, let's, let's work on the 16. So roughly four years later, I believe in 2020, they came out with the 16 year old. That was the first time I believe it was introduced. It might have been 19, I'm not 100% sure, but I I'm pretty sure it was a 20. Uh, and they came out with a 16 year old. It was met with mixed reviews. Uh, and uh, so I was like, okay, let, let me get my hands on the 16 and see what the fuss is all about. So uh, what I have in my hand is the 2020 bottling of the Kill Karen 16 years old. How do I know that? I know that because it says so right here at the bottom. I can't show it to you, but it says it's a 16 year old Kill Karen bottled on 5th October 2020 with a code of 20 slash 121. So if you know your Kilcarran cast codes, please help me out here and tell me, uh, give me some more details about uh, the cask here. What I do know about this particular bottling and I checked it up on Whiskey Base, you should see the screenshot up on screen now, is that this particular bottle is made from 96% uh, bourbon barrels and 4% Marsala wine casks, which is very interesting, not because they've used Marsala wine casks, but because it's just 4%, 4% in the mix. I don't know if that's enough, frankly, maybe it is. Uh, I don't know, uh, but yeah, it's 96% bourbon and 4% Marsala casks. And uh, I believe there are other versions. Uh, I think the 21 version is a 75 25 bourbon sherry. And I believe there's another version flying around, which is the 70 30 bourbon sherry version. So please uh, uh, educate me and apologies for the lack of, for my lack of knowledge. But if you could put that down in the comments, that would be very, 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 very helpful. In the meantime, however, ladies and gentlemen, we have with us the pleasure. Ouch. Someone broke off this cap and now it's pinching me so hard. I'd like to introduce you to the 2020 bottling of the Kilcarran 16. This is what natural color looks like. This is what non-chill filtration looks like. And this is bottled at 46%. Bottled at 46%, 96% bourbon barrels, 4% masala cost, non-chill filtered, natural color, the way whiskey should be made. I believe, I haven't really found out uh, how much it costs, but I believe it ranges between 70, 100 pounds, depending on how greedy your retailer is. I think the introductory price for this was about 60 pounds or 65 pounds, uh, but uh, of course, because it says Campbelltown and everyone has lost their minds, uh, retailers are like, hey, would you like to pay an extra 40 pounds for this bottle? And everyone's like, yeah, 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 let's do it. And so that's why it's probably 100 pounds somewhere now. So, but. It is what it is. Right, there you go. That's what we have in our glass. Quite uh, quite cloudy. Quite cloudy, it's not very clear. I And as you can see, I mean, there's a lot gone from here. I took this bottle from a friend of mine. I'm not sure how long he had it on his shelf and how quickly he went through it, but I've heard that this whiskey changes quite a bit from the neck pour down to, down to its butthole, which what I think <laughs> The all bottom of the whiskey should be called butthole whiskeys. Um, so I'm not really sure. I've not had a neck pour, so I can't compare. I've not drunk the 21, so I don't know how that stacks up to this. But what I do know is that I have a butthole dram from the 16 year old bottle, uh, bottled in 2020, which is 96% bourbon. And you know what? I think I'd consider myself quite an expert if I can eke out the 4% Marsala wine cask in here. Oh, that's a really nice nose. Ooh, this is like a this is like a camphor diesel um, uh, oily, very very oily, very industrial oily. So much wax in here, lots of waxiness in here. I know Serge from Whiskey Fun likes that. It's a lot of wax in here. Yeah, like those. Um, like those wax fruits that you, you those display fruits that you find on, find on dining tables in people's houses. 
I love this waxiness and I think that that comes from uh, uh, good bourbon barrels and I think it's a signature of the Campbelltown area for some reason. I think it's in the water. I'm not 100% sure but this waxiness comes through really nicely. There's a citrus in here as well, very soft lemon lime citrus, a sweet citrus, a pineapple citrus, very sponge cake. Quite, quite earthy as well. I like there's a there's a there's a heathery hay element to it as well. And maybe some hints of fruit like melons. Yes. So overall, lovely, lovely uh, a combination of uh, aromas on the nose. I find absolutely nothing wrong with it. Would I have been able to guess the Marsala cask? I highly doubt it. But you know what? I think it's a very, very good nose. I really like it. I think uh, most whiskeys, if, have, if they have a good nose, uh, live up to the palate as long as the mouthfeel is good. This is a nice palette. This is very medium, medium to full, quite creamy. There's a bonfire smoke to it. Um, it's quite salty, um, briny. The pineapple is back. And that um, that minerality that I really, really like, that's the, the waxiness, it's there. It has a very, very um, warehouse, dry warehouse mouthfeel to it, a little weird. Um, weird flavor profile but it does with a touch of black pepper the finish is nice and long stays on your palate I like the 46% that comes through that citrus in here as well mm. overall wow big finish big 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 finish sign of a good whiskey sign of a sign of a well-constructed whiskey sign of a complex whiskey which I like so I think this whiskey has grown um, from the neck pour down to the butthole. It's kind of grown um, and it's, it's become a lot... Um, aggressive is the wrong word, but it's, it's become really um, uh, powerful, you know, in its delivery, which I like. There's no off notes here. Hint of limestone towards the end as well to the back of the palate. But overall, this is a very, very good warming experience. This is uh, this is a satisfying whiskey. Um, I think the 16 years have um, have given it a bit more nuance as compared to the 12 year old. I think the 12 year old's um, a little aggressive, a little raw uh, in some ways. But this one's a little more mellow. This one's a little more, um, you know, uh, not not quick to jump to the fore. If you know what I mean, you really have to, you have to live with it to to feel it. And I think that's a that's a, that's a testament to a good whiskey, in my opinion. Ooh, very salty as well now. Very briny. So yeah, um, wow, what can I say? So yes, um, very, very good whiskey. Very, very accomplished whiskey. I think well-constructed whiskey. Well done, Glen Guile, for powering through and saying, you know what, we're not gonna rest on our laurels and just stick with the 12. We're gonna come up with the 16 as well and let's see see what, uh, what it does. And I'm guessing that in another couple of years, we should have the 20-year-old Kilcarran uh, coming out sort of mid-summer, right? I mean, that should be the case. Uh, I hope they have some stocks left over. I don't know how much that's going to sell for. Uh, but yes, be prepared. Be prepared to sell your kidney, your child's kidney. Uh, but, uh, you know, I know people who do that. I might be one of them. Who knows? All I do know is that I do like the 16-year-old. Uh, I... Uh, I did read some very, very mixed reviews. There were people who didn't like it. I'm not sure if it was a batch variance or a different recipe completely uh, subsequent to the 2020 version. Uh, so uh, I can't say. Uh, all I do know is that the 20 version, the one that I'm drinking, which is the 96 uh, and four uh, combination, uh, generally has some good reviews. And you know, frankly, I concur. Becoming even more salty. 
extreme salinity to this, you know, extremely saline. If I didn't know any better, I'd say somebody put like salt water in this. Um, but yeah, so what do I think? I think I think this is a very good whiskey. Um, I don't know how much it's selling for right now, given that it's from Campbelltown. Uh, but uh, hey, man, if you're curious about Campbelltown whiskeys like I am, and you know, and if you like the stuff that comes out of Glengyle, then I think this will be up your alley. This should be something you like. I know Serge will like this because of that waxiness, that minerality that he finds uh, in uh, Kleinleash and Brora. So there's, there's some uh, element of that in here as well. And uh, I think it's an acquired taste. Some people really, really, really like it. Uh, like I do, I know a few friends of mine who do. Um, so if you like that certain type of flavor profile, then this whiskey is for you. If you don't, well, obviously not. But you know, overall, I'm gonna say this is a good whiskey. I like this whiskey. I'm gonna give this a 7.5 B+, which I think is an above average score for, this whis uh, for any whiskey. So A minus, eight? No, let's, let's stick with 7.5, because I think it's, uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's it doesn't blow you out of the water, you know. It doesn't hit it, hit it completely out of the park. But it is a very accomplished uh, whiskey and a very well constructed whiskey. Yes, I like it. Um, if you like what you saw, then you also go and buy it, and maybe you'll like it. And uh, that's it. That's all what we have for you today. And uh, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me for this uh, whiskey review. Um, please, like I said, don't forget to uh, subscribe and hit the bell icon or even like the video. Or if none of that, just drop a comment and let me know if you liked it or if you didn't like it. Uh, every bit helps. And um, once again, thank you to uh, my members and my Patreon gang. You guys are awesome. And what else? Uh, keep drinking whiskey, be responsible, all the good stuff. And uh, I gotta go, I gotta edit this because it needs to come out soon. All right, I'm the Malta Activist, until next time.